the question is, why are you feeling like you're stuck in quicksand in your finances and marriage? Hi, I'm Cliff Weldon, and I'd like to share some things with you today which help me to get unstuck. Like I'm feeling I'm in quicksand and just keep sinking and sinking and sinking. And if you apply these principles, you'll have a change in your life. Trust me, you will. First, I want to let you know, as we always talk about, you need to upgrade your operating system, the operating system of your mind. If you're on a PC, Windows, sometimes you have an update, or even on your phone, they send out an update. You may have an app that you had on there for a period of time, but now this app doesn't work. Or maybe the particular app needs to be updated. Well, if our electronic devices needs updating, then why don't we get updated? As far as allowing our minds to learn new things, to develop new insights. God has opened up the door to give us examples of those who were courageous and who trusted in him and who had wealth. So why do you want to have wealth? Why do you want to get rich? I want you to write down all the reasons why you should have financial freedom. Okay, do that for me. All the reasons why you should have financial freedom. Well, let me share with you some of the ways I think that I would like to have financial freedom or I am experiencing financial freedom. First of all, various ways of having more money to travel. I can take my family to places and not worry or eat in a restaurant, a four or five star restaurant and not worry about what the bill is because I have the resources. The whole goal is purchase more time to enjoy your family. How do you do that? Well, cutting the grass while I'm saving money. But if you're an entrepreneur and you're working on things to build your imagination, to bring more income in, then that's the opportunity for you to buy more time with your family. Pay somebody. Cleaning the house. Hire somebody to clean your home. Certain repairs. Projects. Well, I'll do it myself. Well, imagine how much time if it took you two hours to do something versus maybe two hours, you can make maybe oh, a few thousand dollars in two hours. But say you paid somebody a hundred dollars. So imagine the return there, how much you got. Giving to more causes, to better our life, or to better your local fellowship or nonprofit organization. Here's some quotes that Benjamin Franklin shared with us. He said, for the best return on your money, pour your purse into your head. Okay, for the best return on your money, pour your purse into your head. Then he also said, empty the coins in your purse into your mind and your mind will fill your purse. What do you mean by that? Well, readers are leaders. So do you spend time more time looking at TV versus reading a book? I've experienced this when I was in graduate school. We had to, it was a two and a half year program and I mean, every night we had to come out. We came, we were working at the time, a, a regular job. And we had, my wife and I were going together and we had to spend at least two and a half hours each night and all day Saturday and all day Sunday after church doing homework and doing papers. And we got a break and I turned the TV on after it was a Thanksgiving break, I believe. And I was just flipping through the dial because my mind wasn't stimulated. And I realized like, at first I was like, heart didn't want to let go of the remote. But then I found out, wow, this was really exciting because the things I was learning, I was allowing those new uh, network, neural networks to start to develop and start learning new things. So if you're not prospering and being in good health, even as your soul prosper, think about how much are you investing in things versus books? So the other thing that Benjamin Franklin said, if a man empties his person to his head, no one can take it from him. If you put your money in a big screen TV, someone can take it from you. Benjamin went on to say that an investment in knowledge always pays the highest returns. So 
You think about this as the word of God tells us in Proverbs chapter 10. Poor is he who works with a negligent and idle hand, but the hand of the diligent makes him rich. He who gathers during summer and takes advantage of his opportunities is a son who acts wisely, but he who sleeps during harvest and ignores the moment of opportunity is a son who acts shamefully. And here's the last quote. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. That's the upright, those in right standing with God. So what action are you willing to take to get out of the quicksand? I'd like to offer you an opportunity to go with me as we take a challenge to learn how to make more offers, how to develop the me that God created. Who is that inside of me? And we want you to join us because this is gonna transform your life. It transformed mine and my thinking and my habits. So check out the link below and a check link in this particular video and click on it and join us for the Make More Offers Challenge. I hope to see you there, and I hope today's insight has helped transform your life to something different. I'm Cliff Weldon. You have a good day.